Welcome to Office 2016 video number five. Hey, in this video, we're going to see how to create an ad flyer in Word and then create a PDF file and a web page from that flyer using Save As. Now, here are our exciting topics. I'm going to close this with the X up here or the keyboard Alt F4. Now, here's our class website. But before we go here, I want to open up Windows Explorer using the Window E key. Now, I've already put my jump drive in. You put your jump drive in. And we're going to drill down using our triangles or pluses to open up the folders in our system of folders on the left side of Windows Explorer. Fall, Business 216 video files, and now I'm going to click on the folder O2 Word and look inside. This is the file that we created together in our last video. But now, in this video, number five, this is the first video where we have a start file. So I need to go to our website and download it to that folder. Now remember, last video we learned the awesome keyboard to jump between windows. Alt-Tab. So I'm going to hold Alt down and tap the Tab key. Remember, as I tap, I can toggle through all open windows. And when I see exactly the window I want, I let go of the Alt key. Now, here's our base site, people.highline.edu slash mgervin. Let's click on Business 216, then down here on Word. And here's class project number five. Hey, there's no video yet here. Oh, yeah, I'm filming it right now. But look at that. There's a start file. That means we're going to download it, open it, and work with it in this video. There's also a finished version of the file that will contain the finished file after we're done with this video. All right, we're going to right click. And depending on what browser you're in, we'll say save something something. As. I'm going to say Save Link As. We have the power to save it where we want using Save As. I'm drilling down into Highline, Fall, 216, Video Files, and finally I see Word. That's a fine name. That's a fine extension. One, two, three, the three parts of Save As. And I'm going to click Save. Now I'm going to use Alt-Tab to jump back to Windows Explorer. I already had this selected. Now I can see my start file. Now I want to increase the size of this column. So I come between the two column headers. And when I see that black vertical line with a horizontal black arrow cursor, I can double click to best fit that column. There's the full name. Now we're going to use Windows Explorer to open this. So I double click. Now this project is going to involve creating a flyer or an ad. Cornucopia Health Food Store is having a grand opening. Now I already, of course, created the text. But we're going to format this text and add a picture or clip art. The very first thing, though, is I want to change the name. Remember, we opened this file. But now I want to use Save As to change the file name. I want to keep the start file with no formatting. So I hit the F12 key. Now I'm going to come down. And because we opened it from exactly the correct file path, we can see O2 Word. That's exactly where we want it. Notice we don't see everything exposed on the left, but the file path is up in the address bar. This file name, I'm going to change it. I'm very carefully going to click right after R, hold Shift, and use my arrow key to very carefully highlight Start. Now I'm going to type Finished File. That will be our name. We'll keep the extension. Now I can come over and click Save or hit Enter. I can see up in the title bar, there's my file name. Now I'm going to use Control and Roll so I can see on one page the whole document. Now what I want to do is we're going to have different formatting for different elements. But right off the bat, I want to highlight everything, increase the font, and center everything. 
Now, there's a few ways that we could highlight everything, right? We could take our I-beam cursor and click and drag. We also saw how to use the selection bar last video. But when you're trying to select everything like we are here, it's almost always faster to use the keyboard Control A, especially if your cursor is someplace besides the top of the document. So I'm going to use Control A. Now we want to increase the font size. And by all means, we can come up to the font group. And remember, this is character level formatting, as we learned last video. We could use the drop down. And watch this, auto preview as I select different ones. I haven't clicked yet. I'm just moving the cursor. Ah, but there is a great keyboard that allows us to increment one font size at a time, and go down one font size at a time. Now, you're going to have to find on your keyboard the square brackets. Now, let's try it. I'm going to use Control, close square bracket. Boom, boom, boom. I'm holding Control and tapping the square bracket. Now, I like this trick a lot, especially when we're trying to fit something exactly to a defined space. Here, we're trying to fit it approximately to the edge of our margins. Later in PowerPoint, we'll have to increase the font size for a title until it exactly touches the edge of the title. All right, I'm going to square bracket, square bracket, and that looks good. Now, I used close square bracket. If you go too big, then you just use the open square bracket. So I'm holding Control and using open square bracket to go down. All right, I'm going to stop at 22 font size. Now, I immediately want to center everything here. Remember, last video we talked about paragraph level formatting. If I want to center just this paragraph, remember, my cursor just has to be somewhere in the paragraph. And I can see that hard return there, so I know this is a paragraph. But we want to do paragraph level formatting to every single paragraph. So in this case, we do have to have everything selected. Now with everything selected, we can come up Home Ribbon, Paragraph Group. Now I could click on Alignment Center, but notice there is a keyboard, Control E. Now this is not really an important keyboard unless you work in PowerPoint and Word a lot. So we either click or I'm going to use Control E. Everything is centered. Now before we do more formatting, we want to insert a picture. So I'm very carefully going to click in the hard return between Centerbrook Mall and Grand Opening. Now if we want to insert a picture or clip art, we go up, of course, to the Insert Ribbon tab, Illustrations Group. Now video number two, we saw how to download pictures from our phone. If you had some pictures you want to insert, then you click the Picture button. And this is just like our Save As, Open, in our case, Insert Picture. We simply navigate to wherever that picture is on our computer. We're going to try this Online Pictures. Now, when we click this, it's going to bring us to Bing. And if you don't want to use Bing to search for pictures, you simply Go to Google Images, search Download, and then Insert as a Picture. Now I'm going to search here and type Cornucopia and Enter. Now it gives us some pictures and some clip art. You may see a completely different selection here. I'm going to come over and hover my cursor. There's a little checkbox. I'm going to check that, and you can go to whichever picture or clip art you want and check all of them. And once you have the images you want, then click Insert. Now, it actually did something funny here. It looks like if I'm clicking around, you can see these little white circles. That means the outside edge of the picture, or in our case, clip art. And I'm clicking in here. It looks like it inserted two different things. Now, notice dot, dot, dot. That means I'm inside this object. I want to very carefully, that cursor right there is called the Move cursor. But I want to use the Move cursor right here to click on the outside edge to make sure that it's a solid line. 
Once it's a solid line, I can delete this using the Delete key. And now I can see I have just that picture. Now we can resize this picture. If I point to one of the white circles, I'm going to click on the lower right-hand corner white circle and click and drag. That looks good. If I click down here, that's our picture for our Cornucopia Health Food Flyer. Now we want to do some more formatting. First thing I want to do is I want to highlight the very first line. And I want to highlight grand opening. So notice I'm using the selection bar. And this is actually kind of hard. My selection cursor has to be right next to grand opening. I'm going to hold Control and click. Now, sometimes that's hard to do, right? You accidentally click this. I'm going to start again, click there. And very carefully, I'm holding Control. And I have the two items that I want to be larger than any of the other text. Now I'm going to use my keyboard control square bracket and make these much bigger than everything else. I stopped at 33. Now the next thing that we'd like to do is add some formatting to these first two lines. So I'm going to use the selection bar, click, hold, and drag to select the first two paragraphs, or in our case, first two lines. Now I'd like to add some dark blue fill and then white font color. Now if I come up to the font group, that is highlighter. If I select the drop down and select yellow, I want you to notice that only the characters or letters got the highlighting. That's just like we would do in a textbook, right? Highlight just some words. Now I'm going to undo this using the keyboard Control Z. What I'd really like is to have the color from the edge of the margin all the way to the other edge of the margin. The way we do that is not with font, character formatting, highlighter, but with paragraph level formatting. And there it is. There's the fill dropdown. I'm going to select the dropdown, and I'm going to choose a very dark blue. Now I want you to notice something. White font appeared. If we go up to font color, I didn't click that. Now let's just do a little experiment here, because this is brand new. This did not used to happen in earlier versions. If I change the fill to a light color, yellow, whoa, what is going on? Now it's black. I didn't click that button right there. Actually, if I click the drop down, automatic has some ability to sense when there is a large value difference, like when we select the color dark blue. In that case, then automatic turns to white. That's not always the case, because if I select the drop down and select red, that's a red fill, and it has black font color. The automatic didn't pick it up. Now, if you printed out this right here, this would not look good. So whenever you have fill and font color, and this goes for PowerPoint and Excel also, over in Excel, we add fill and font color to the top of our column headers. But anytime the value difference isn't big enough, when you print it, it's hard to read. Now, the way you can decipher whether the value difference is big enough between font color and fill is squint your eyes. Now, I'm squinting my eyes, and it's hard to tell the difference between the black font and the red fill. All right, I'm going to highlight both of these. Go back. In our case, if we wanted red, right, we'd have to manually go up to font color and select this white. But the automatic will do it for us. I'm going to click the drop down for fill, down to dark blue, and there we go. Now I want to do something similar down on huge selection every day all year long. So I've selected it up to fill, and I want to select this medium blue. Look at that. It didn't pick up the white. That would not print. That does not look good. I'm squinting my eyes. Actually, when you're squinting your eyes, you should not have it highlighted. I can't see a big enough value difference. So when it printed, it wouldn't look good. I click in the selection bar, and now I'm going to change font to white. Now the next thing we want to do is I want to add some bullets 
to this list right here. Before we can add bullets, I need to highlight. Now, one way to highlight from a particular location all the way to the end of the document is by clicking and dragging your I-beam. But I want to click right before T in Tofu. The way that we could jump to the end is by using Control End. We saw that in video number four, our last video, right? But watch this. I'm going to click up at the top. And instead of just using Control End to jump, if I hold the Shift key while doing Control End, it will highlight everything to the end. So let's try it. I'm holding Control Shift, and now I'm going to tap the End key. And look at that. Now, this is a silly small example. Our I beam could have been sufficient to drag. But if you had four pages that you wanted to highlight to the end, Control Shift End is great. Now, bullets. Notice each one of these is a paragraph or a hard return. When we create a bulleted list or a number list, we're always typing something and then hitting Enter. That's why when you go up to the paragraph group, bullets and numbers are paragraph level formatting. So when I click on the bullet, just like that, I have my bulleted list. Now, look at that. I actually have something hanging out at the top of the next page. We definitely don't want that for our printed flyer, but we'll fix that in just a moment. I actually want to take the bulleted list and align to the left. Now we can come up to paragraph level formatting, click align to the left. Notice the keyboard is Control L. That's an easy one to remember, too. Same with right. So I'm either going to click align left or come down and use Control L. Now, we need to deal with this little bit hanging out on the next page. The way I'm going to do it is I'm actually going to change the margins. Hopefully, that will give us a little bit more breathing room on either side to fit this to one page. Now, we've talked about character level formatting and paragraph level formatting. When we start talking about margins or orientation, this is portrait, you could have landscape. Those are called section level formatting. Now, in a later video, we will see how to set a section and then have different margins in different parts of the Word document. But here, we just want to see how to change the margins. Now, we have to use Page Setup. We go up to the Layout Ribbon tab and Page Setup. Now, we saw the keyboard to launch this dialog box. And this keyboard will work over in Excel also. You can either click, or we can use the Alt keyboard. And Alt keyboards, you hit the keys in succession. So Alt, PSP. Now we need to change top, bottom, left, right, all to 0.75, for example. And we want to learn a great trick that will allow us to jump to the next text box. If I hit the Tab key, and then the Tab key again, and Tab yet again, Tab moves forward through the text boxes. If you need to go backwards, Shift-Tab, Shift-Tab, Shift-Tab goes backwards. Now, that is a great keyboard because it'll work in all of our dialog boxes that we use. It also works at websites, like if you're buying a ticket at southwest.com, tab, you fill out your credit card number, tab, the expiration year, shift tab, shift tab goes backwards. Not only that, but I always think of tab and shift tab as tab is forward, shift tab goes back. The reason why that's important is later we'll talk about bulleted and numbered lists in more detail. Also, there's lots of bullets in PowerPoint. Tab goes in a level, Shift tab goes back a level. So I always think of tab as forward, Shift tab as back. Now let's try it. 0.75 tab, 0.75 tab, 0.7 tab, 0.75 tab. Gutter? No, that's only when you have a book and you need some extra space for the binding. If we needed to change the section level formatting orientation, we would do it here. Now, dialog boxes like this usually have more options 
than the ribbon tabs and let you change things at a finer level. All right, I'm going to either click OK or hit Enter. And sure enough, everything fit onto one page. Now, the last thing we need to do is I want to add a page border. Now, if we go up to the Home Ribbon tab, Paragraph Group, there's a drop down for borders. Now, normally, all of these borders allow us to do paragraph borders. And we'll talk a lot about those when we do our business letters. Those are very important for underlines when you're underlining the whole paragraph. But what we want to do is go all the way down to this last option, Borders and Shading. Now here, Paragraph Borders, lots of cool things you can do. But we want to go over to Page Border. This will actually put a border around the entire page. Now notice there's a preview here. That is a cool trick with dialog boxes. If you don't know how different things work in your dialog box, just try them and watch the preview. Now what we want is we want to come down to Art. And this has been around forever. It's so cool. We can click Apples, and there'll be apples all around our page. This would be good if you had a flyer for an Apple Festival. I'm going to scroll down and choose a simple one if I can find the stars. I'm going to choose these stars right here. And instantly, we're going to have stars around the whole page. Now I'm going to click OK. And there we go. There is our finished flyer. Now you know what? I've been living dangerously this whole time. I have not saved. By the way, I've got to show you something. Word documents, PowerPoint, Excel, they all, they all will automatically save. If you go up to File, Down to Options, in the Save group, there's Auto Save. You can change it to every whatever minutes you want. Now, 10 minutes, I can do a lot of work in 10 minutes. I'm going to click Escape. So if I don't Control S regularly, I risk losing my work. Control S. Now, before we use Save As to create a PDF file, two things. I want to see how to print this. Now, we're never going to use File, Print, uh-uh, no. We're going to use the keyboard Control-P. Now, Control-P, that is a print preview. You always want to Control-P and look to see if it's going to print out the way you want. The Print dialog box over here, you can print things like all pages. If you had just a certain part of your document selected, you could select that one. Current page, if you had 20 pages and you want to print just the current page. Escape, print one side. Sometimes you want to print, for example, both sides. And then down here, there's some options for page setup. I don't like to use the options here. I like to go straight to the page setup or like the dialog box that we used previously. Of course, you could select your printer, select how many copies, and click Print. I'm going to click Escape. One last thing is Spell Check. Now notice there's a red squiggly line, a double blue line, and a dot, dot, dot. That was like a purple line. Now the red squiggly line means not in dictionary. It doesn't mean it's spelled wrong. It just means it's not in the dictionary. For us. That one is a word that's not in the dictionary, but it's a proper name. The double blue line means grammar. It doesn't like the fact that that letter is capitalized, but for us it's fine. Dot, 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 that means it's going to try and suggest a different word or a different word choice. Now, spell check is review. And there it is. You can see the keyboard. And that keyboard goes way back. Escape, escape, escape. I think the first time I ever used F7 for spell check was Word Perfect in 1984 or something like that, before I used Word. Now I'm going to use F7 to open up spell check. Now notice it says not in dictionary. It's underlined. We have the choice ignore once, ignore all. I'm going to say ignore all, even though it's only listed once in our document. There, change capitalization, grammar. I'm going to say, don't check for this issue, because this is a flyer. And then look at this, consider 
vocabulary choice. Usually, Microsoft is not smart enough to know what word I want to use. This is one where I might select, don't check for this issue. All right, click OK. Now, we have two last awesome tasks to do in this video. The first one is I want to save this as a PDF. Now, I do not want to go up to File, Save as Adobe PDF. That's too many clicks. We're going to use F12, Save as Dialog Box. Now, I already have where I want to save it. I already have what I want to save it as. But I'm going to click the Extension dropdown, and there it is. Converting to a PDF is as easy as PDF. Now, I want you to notice something potentially terrifying. There's my file path, and all of a sudden, all of my files were deleted. No, no, no. The Word documents are still there. Anytime you choose a file extension, it's as if there is a filter on your view. Those Word documents are still in that folder. Because there are no PDFs in here, that's why we don't see anything. So I'm going to select PDF, click Save, or hit Enter. Now, it didn't pop up. I'm going to go ahead and use Windows Explorer, Alt-Tab. And sure enough, in my Word folder, there's my PDF. I could double click using Windows Explorer, and there's the PDF file. Alt-F4 to close that. Alt-Tab to jump back. Another option for Save As is if you want to save as a web page. Now, Word and Excel have the option to create a web page. This is not a website designing tool. It's only when you have a simple flyer or a simple budget or something that you want to give to your webmaster to post at the website. So you ready? We're going to hit the F12 key. We have our file path up here. I'm going to come down. We have a name right here. I want to come down to the dropdown. And we're going to select not this one, not this one either. Those two are junky and don't always give you what you want. You want the straight web page. And notice it says asterisk.htm or asterisk.html. The asterisk is a wild card in Office that means the file name could be whatever before the actual extension .htm. Now I'm going to select that one. Same thing. I'm in the Word folder. Because I have an extension selected, it is a filter on my view. I don't have any web pages, so I don't see anything in that Word folder. Now I'm going to click Save. Now it gives me a view here. And if you look down in the status bar, we actually have different views. Read mode, print layout, and that's web layout. Also, those options are over on the View tab. Now I'm going to close this, because this is a Word document. I could actually come and edit this and click Save, and it would save. You can see that .htm, it would save as a web page. Let's close this. And notice it did two things. It created .htm extension file with this little icon. That comes from your default browser. If you had a default browser of Chrome or Mozilla, that icon would show up there. But notice it also created a folder. So if you were going to give this to your webmaster, to publish, you'd have to give both of these items. Now, we can view this by simply double clicking. And look, it opened up in a browser. Wow, when we did Save As, look at that. That new feature automatic didn't give us what we want. All right, watch this. This is going to be cool. We're going to close this. I can actually come to this file and right click. And I want to say Edit. Now, notice that is a web page. It's going to ask us, what program do you want to edit it in? Well, we used Word, so I'm going to click Word, click OK. Now I'm going to highlight just those first two paragraphs or first two lines. And now I'm going to explicitly come over and change it to white. So I've edited this. Notice the extension up here, .htm. Control S to save it. Alt F4 to close it. Double click to open it, and look at that. I don't think I like that automatic uh, font color. 
That's a new feature. That seems like a bug to me. All right, I'm going to close this. Double click Finished File. Oh, look, I'm still in that view. I'm going to come down and click on Print Layout icon or go up to View, Print Layout. All right, so in this video, we saw how to format a Word document and insert a picture so we could create a flyer or an advertisement. We talked about the difference between paragraph and character level formatting. One example we saw was either highlight, which is character, or paragraph fill, which is paragraph. We saw some keyboards, control shift n to highlight all the way to the end. We inserted a picture. We used some bullets. We even added a page border. Then, of course, we saved as the powerful Save As and created a PDF and website. All right, next video, we're going to see how to create a business letter and learn some more important tricks in Word. All right, we'll see you next video.